Over the last couple of months, I've been talking to a publisher who is interested in publishing my game, Hexagod, and that's incredibly exciting. And I was kind of blown away when I first got contacted by them and met with them and talked to the, the publisher. And over the course of those last couple of months, that excitement has kind of weaned away as we you know, negotiated some terms in the contract and eventually got to the point where we had a written contract that I kept working through and understanding legal terms and finally culminating in me getting my own lawyer to go through and review the terms themselves. And ultimately, two days ago, I decided to turn down the contract from the publisher, which is a really weird place to be because I basically rolled a 20. I crit on my roll. A publisher reached out to me, made an offer, and from everything I could understand about this whole process, they're a publisher who's going to basically let me do what I want to do. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about who the publisher is or any of the terms because that feels a bit unprofessional, but I want to talk about the decision because I think it's a bit interesting. I've known that I'm risk adverse in my personal finances, but I didn't know how I would be in a studio setting. And ultimately speaking, I'm also fairly risk adverse here. And so let's talk about that a bit more. And you might be sitting here and thinking, Aramis, you're an idiot. I'm, I, I've, I've went and talked to hundreds of publishers. And I've been turned down time and time again. I'm, I just need that funding and I can go make my game. But I'm not in that situation. I don't actually need funding. If you watched the video last week, which a bunch of you really enjoyed, uh, it talks about my finances of the studio in the last six months. And you'll have realized that I am self-funded. I saved up a bunch of money through living frugally, through being someone who just enjoys playing video games as a hobby, which is a cheap hobby to play. And I don't need extravagant, extravagant vacations, extravagant cars or houses to, to live a life that I find meaning in. For me, I can live a relatively cheap life. And so I've done that and saved up a bunch of money and I'm now funding my studio with some of that money and some of the money from my first game, Chess Survivors, which is selling, still selling today, um, far more than I expected it to. So I don't need development funding. Ultimately speaking, I wanted to do it for the learning process. I wanted to see if they took my vision for Hexagod, let me make the game I want to make, how would they market it? How would they change the Steam page or the make a Steam trailer for it? Or what sort of streamers would they eventually go and sponsor? What, are that, what does that cost breakdown even look like if you were to go hire, hire somebody to play a game? How much does that cost? I've never done that before. Heck, I've never even sponsored myself, so I don't know what those, what those numbers look like once you get up to your, your, uh, your bigger streamers and YouTube content creators out there. Amos from the future here. I need your help right now. We're talking about some heavy stuff of not taking a publishing deal, but go check out Hexagod. Even if you just go wishlist it. That'll help get more people's, more players eyes on Hexagod. And it's a really fun game. So when I finally do release this, you can help support me and make sure I can keep self-publishing and keep creating good content. Or you can even go check out uh, Chess Survivors, which is on sale right now for 50% uh, off for about $2.50. All that revenue goes to supporting this channel, this content. And let's dive back into talking about why I turned down a publisher. So I was interested in it from a learning perspective. I was interested in it from a perspective of getting to meet some more people in the industry. But then I talked to my lawyer and um, it's interesting to talk to a lawyer. So I negotiated the contract of the initial kind of handshake terms. And then I also went through the contract myself and found a couple things that I was uncomfortable with. We worked through those together with the publisher. And I say we, it, but that's just me. I, don't, I'm, I didn't talk to my cat Carl about my legal advice. Um, it was actually a pretty a pretty flexible agreement back, back and forth. The, the publisher was working with me hand in hand every step of the way, which is really cool um, and, and a good sign, I think. But then finally I said, hey, I'm going to go get a lawyer because I wanted to make sure that if I signed this thing, I wasn't going to end up losing my house or end up you know, financially screwing myself for the future. And although lawyers are expensive, I think they're gonna be well worth their weight in gold for you to make sure that you are legally protected from unintentional consequences. And that's exactly how I phrased it to the lawyer I worked with this saying, hey, I, I'm here not because I distrust the publisher, but I'm here because the same reason you hire a plumber is not to turn the bolts on the pipes, but it's for them to look at something and say, hey, that thing's gonna fuck you if you don't deal with it. And that's exactly why I got a lawyer. And so if you're in a publishing contract with a lawyer or with a, with any sort of a publisher or something like that, go get a lawyer. It's expensive, but you're gonna be covering yourself for future uh, negative consequences. And so the lawyer went through the, the contract and found 
more things than I thought they should have found. I was expecting a few notes and stuff like that, but it was a much longer list than I was anticipating. And that kind of was the final nail in the coffin. Not that the publisher had sent me a crappy agreement, but it was like reading through all of these points and like having thought I was in a good state with the contract and reading through some of these like um, unintended consequences of things I just kind of missed. I was like, oh wow, there might actually be more risk involved here then there is reward. And once I kind of realized that, it it just sat with me in a weird way. And so this whole time, my gut has felt a bit funny. And as I thought about the risk-reward analysis, uh, which when I first learned about that term, I thought there was like a formula you could put your risk number into and you could you could then have your reward on the other side and it would spit out a number that says, yes, do it or no, don't do it. But I think it's a little bit more abstract than that. I think understanding risk is about that gut feeling. Is this right for me? Does this sit well with me? And honestly, this whole time, my gut's kind of been like, I don't know if I need this. I was pushing myself maybe to do it because I thought I should do it because it feels like indie developers want to get publishers and indie developers want to get this funding so they can go make their game. But again, I don't need that. I'm, I'm funded basically through the beginning of 2026 and that's just off of the income of Twitch, YouTube, and my current game, Chess Survivors, which is out the door right now. But Hexagod's coming around the corner, and I plan on making a third, fourth, and fifth game. So I was only in it again for the learning opportunities. And once you then consider the risk of that and opening myself up to, like, having to have rev share of Hexagod moving forward and, like, the administrative burden of maybe having to work with another partner and, and like, for the long haul, being committed to Hexagod and being committed to bug fixes, not for my own desire, but from a legal standpoint and potentially like going into a litigation with, with this publisher, I can't afford that. My, my studio doesn't simply, I'm, I'm, I'm running in the negative if you consider my own costs versus the amount of money I'm making as a public, as a, as a studio. And so if I was into a litigation and even call it a 40 hour lawyer thing or a hundred hour lawyer thing, that basically puts me underwater if I lose that thing. And that might be a very small percent chance that that's gonna happen. I see a path forward. I see a path to profitability as a studio to, to like sustainable um, success as a studio. And I don't need the funding. I don't need their help to make Hex got a great game. I have faith I can make it myself. So ultimately speaking, Go with your gut feeling in life in general. If something doesn't feel right with you, listen to the feeling. Don't go do something because you think you should do it. If it feels funny, if the company you're at sucks and they're not treating you right and you don't like that, go find another job to work at. You don't have to do it. Listen to your gut. Understand the risk, reward, benefit of decisions. And eventually you have hindsight where you can look back at a decision and say, was it a good decision or was it a mistake? And if it's a mistake, that's a great opportunity to learn from this mistake so you don't make the same sort of decisions in the future. For me, in the context of my life, where I'm at right now with my studio funding and my risk tolerances and my perceived rewards, working with a publisher just isn't the case. I've learned so much through this process. I've learned what a publisher can do for me. I've learned what lawyers can do for me. I've seen a lot of terms. I've learned a bunch, which is awesome. So if you have any questions for me outside of what the terms are, I'd love to answer them down below. Go check out Hexagod. I'll be on the stream later today, hanging out if you have more questions. I've been Aramis. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you around. Bye-bye.